This is the highly anticipated X-Lite 2.4 GHz transmitter by FreeSky. This transmitter has many pilots excited with its small form factor and high quality Hall Effect gimbals. But does it live up to the hype? Let's find out. Cool, we're here with Crash and Burn Racing. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm extremely excited to bring you the FreeSky X-Lite controller. This is something I've been waiting months for following the threads closely on the interwebs. And yeah, can't wait to take a look at it. So let's get started. So let's first take a look at this controller. First off, the finish is uh, it's pretty nice feeling. The, uh, the build quality with the gaps, they're not too bad. They're not the best I've ever seen, but for the price, it's definitely acceptable. On the bottom part here, here's where you'll have your USB port, your SD card, headphone jack, and your smart port. Here you'll see it's capable of an external antenna, which mine did not come with. There's some debate on RC groups. If it comes with one or not, I can tell you I've ordered two of them. It doesn't come with one. And it is an RP SMA. There's a picture of the connector. The top two switches are three-way switches. The bottom two switches are just two-way switches. And you also have your sliders. It has this nice rubberized texture on the handles. This has support for external bays, which will be the R or excuse me, the R9 Lite. That's what it is. And it's gonna be their long distance version of a crossfire. And there's the pins for it. And it's gonna snap right into place here. But we're gonna put this cover back on for right now. The gimbals actually feel really nice. It has that nice uh noisy sound to them <laughs> and uh, but yeah they're very smooth obviously you're not going to have near the throw as a normal controller it's going to be a lot shorter and just for a size comparison let's hold up to a playstation controller here a little bit bigger and you can definitely tell where a lot of their inspiration came from here's a an older xbox controller i think it's a 360 and uh, yeah definitely looking a lot like this guy if you're a pincher you're definitely not left out. It's uh, it's not bad. It's definitely not ideal as a uh, full-size controller, but if you're a thumber, get ready to scoop some mints because this thing is mint city. This thing just feels absolutely great as a thumber. First thing we need to do to get this controller set up right is to switch this to the mode that we want. And as you can see, it comes with both gimbals centering and we're gonna switch it to mode two. So we're gonna go to this stick right here and we're gonna put a long screw on to the inside and the short screw to the outside so I went to the bag grab these guys and we're just going to screw them in here whoa 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 whoa! you guys hear that sound pay attention to this sound when that screw is starting to feel a little too tight make sure you back it off you're about to find out why <gasps> All right, so we just ran into a big problem here. Uh, this is the second controller I've actually set up already. And as I was screwing this in, it got a little tight. It was making a little squeaky noise. And the screw actually broke off inside. Here's the, uh, the screw. But I guess this now means that we gotta take this apart. So let's do that. All right, so for disassembly, there are no screws holding this together. It's purely a snap together case. So I've got a uh, gift card here. And I've never done this before, but I'm pretty sure this is just like basic press together. So we're going to start here in this corner, put it in here, and there we go. There's that side. Let's jump to this side. And here, now this side is loose. So let's just work our way down the handle here. That side's good. So it's already good here. Oh, let's not forget to take off the end caps. Now that we got both sides loose, we're just gonna pry it apart. And there you go, now we have it open. Now we see where the screw is broke off and that is going to be quite the challenge to fix. I was really hoping I was gonna be able to uh, some pliers on there but uh let me brainstorm a little bit and see if i get it out and we'll be right back so i was able to take a screwdriver and actually just press out this brass uh threaded bushing here and you can see i actually have a little bit of threads there so i'm 
really hoping I'm going to be able to put some pliers on there and get it out. Um, I actually might try heating it up a little bit first, maybe it'll loosen up a little bit, and I'll get back. And look at that, I actually had some success. I heated up this brass bushing right here for about three to four seconds, and then I just, you know, hello the pliers. Just had enough threads to get on here, and twisted it out. I don't know if you have to heat it up, but if this does happen to you, you actually can have a chance to get it out like I did. One thing I do want to point out is that you can see the threads on this side are actually really clean and it's nice and open, but if I turn it around, I don't know if you can see it on camera as well as I can in person, but the opening on this side is not nearly as clean, and this is definitely where I run into my problem with it getting way too tight and ended up snapping the screw. So I just tried to put the screws through here and it was almost impossible until I got one of these diamond files here and I just went in here and I cleaned out just enough to where I can get the screw in here and it does still feel a little tight. So I'm actually going to double check all the other screws real quick with this because you definitely don't want this to happen again. Alright, I think I've got everything ready to go so let's get this little threaded insert here pressed back into here. We'll see if it's still tight. If not, we'll have to put some glue on it but let's try it first. Alright, we got it back in. Looks like we're back in action. Before we get this transmitter put back together, let's take a good look on the inside since I have it apart. And I noticed that these wires are silicone here and for the batteries, so that's a really, really good thing to have there. But these switches here, you see they're soldered to this board here. So if you break one of these switches, now it would be a little challenging to replace. You unscrew this, solder back on, not impossible, but just, just a little extra work compared to what a wire would be. But to further take this apart, to get this top plate off, all you'd have to do is take off this screw here and this other screw over here, and that would allow this plate to come off to where you can get further inside. But for this purpose, we really don't need to go in any further. So let's get this put back together and continue with the video. All right, so our assembly should be pretty simple here. Should just be able to press right back on, just like it came off. Let's see if we have any problems here. And that's it, it actually pressed together really easy. So let's uh, get these screws put in. Again, long screw on the inside. All right, screws in, and now it is uh, not centering here. So now we'll put in the short screw on the outside. All right, there we go. We've got just the right amount of tension on here. Alright, so now we're ready to put some batteries in, and here I've got some Panasonic batteries, and these are the MH12210s. These are a 2000 milliamp hour battery, and for 18500s, these are about as good as you can get. Unlike the 18650, there's not near as much a selection for these, so I'll put a link down below where you can get these. Also comes with this nice case from that website. And we're going to sell them in here, and it's really simple. The button is the positive side, and you're just going to do positive side first. And make sure I got the right one here. Yep, I do. Twist it and turn it on, and that's it. And let's do the same for the other side. Let's go over the buttons real quick. This is your joystick. goes up, down, side to side. Here is your shift button. That will be used to do your trims. So when you do this, it does a trim for this axis right here. Let me hold on your shift. Now you're doing the pitch on this side. Now I've got both of my X lights ready to go. I've went ahead and set up the models and the radio itself. I was going to include this in this video, but it was just going to make it way too long. You can easily look it up on YouTube. It's the same as the other Tyrannus. So let's get these over to drone space and try them out. So I've got Dalton here with Drone Space, and he's now just put about 10 packs through the X-Lite here, so let's find out what he has to say. Yeah, so after all the batteries are went and burned through this uh, this radio so far, is I'm, I'm loving it. So far this radio is fantastic, the ergonomics, it feels really good in the hands. All the switches are nice and sharp, they feel really good. Uh, it's just like my QX7 and setup wise, all the screens, everything's exactly the same. Uh, the gimbals are really nice, really smooth. It's really touchy compared to a QX7 gimbal, 
Uh, so be prepared for that when you do fly it. Uh, it is very touchy in the roll access. Yeah, I fully agree. Yeah. So are you sold? Would you buy one? I would definitely buy one of these for a travel radio, something that I don't have to pack my QX7 in my backpack. This is something I would definitely keep in my backpack for a spare radio, something to take on the road. And then how do you think it compares to your Turn G Evolution you used to use? So compared to the Turn G Evolution I used to use, this thing is five way, way better than the Turnigy Evolution. The materials they use to make this, it actually has weight to it. It feels really good in the hands. I already know from flying Tyrannus for the last couple months that the range, everything is gonna be tip top. It is gonna perform really good. All right, Dalton, thanks. Thank you. So Dalton is a very experienced FPV pilot. He's been doing this for a little while and he is one of the fastest pilots there at Drone Space, so I would really trusted his opinion so that's why I got it for you and he didn't really like it too much at first but the more he flew it you could definitely tell he was liking it more and more and at the end there you could see how much he actually liked it I pretty much agree with him in everything he had to say the biggest thing with this transmitter is the learning curve when you go from a big transmitter to this one getting used to these uh, shorter throw gimbals it's it's a lot more sensitive and um, just talk about the cons real quick the uh, that kind of a early production issue with the uh, brass inserts for the screw in the back. Be very, very careful of that because that can easily make your transmitter not usable. But that was the only issue I had with it. And I, with all the flying I did with it today, I gotta say I really like it. I didn't have any issues. It's very comfortable and it held up very well. One more thing to add is the battery life with these little 18500 batteries. I have the 2000 mAh hour Panasonic's. Um, I would estimate that you'd get about a full day's worth of flying. Um, it kind of depends on how much you turn it off and on. I had my black light set to 80%, but it definitely was not bad, so it was very usable. That wraps up everything I've got to say about this uh, radio for now. If you have any questions about this radio, please post them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, smash that thumbs down button. I'm Core with Crash and Burn Racing, and thank you for watching.